Hello and welcome fellow ITC court mates to the video on how to use the ITC Rock Muncher. The ITC Rock Muncher is the corpse standard binder for new players and experienced players alike. In order to use it, what we'd recommend is you always go out with a proper loadout. For that, you'll need at least uh, a, a bolt tool, a welding tool, a cable tool, and a pipe tool. Also recommend that you bring along your long rifle, some ammo, and a pickaxe. You never know when you could use those items. Uh, to get started, whenever you, you find uh, a ship on the corp uh, spawn and you want to spawn it, just go ahead and select it, spawn. It'll show up down there soon. Before I hop into it, what I always do though is I always want to first check to see if there are any ores board that maybe somebody had left. So you can go to, I think there's a port right here, yep, right there. Uh, plug into the port there, hit I, just go through the ship uh, or storage and there's nothing there. So uh, we are good to go ahead and repair this ship. Because if you repair the ship and there's anything actually bolted on, or sorry, if there's anything that's uh, in the in the ore container or if it's uh, mounted on like this right here um, it will get lost on, uh, uh, on, on during repair so you need to go ahead and uh, first of all remove any items like this that are on top of it so we'll just go ahead and do that the e key to remove this tripod we'll to do this tripod here and it's in my hand let's drop it on my station storage i get rid of the tripod Well, get rid of that. Get rid of this ammo we don't have in here too. Don't really need it, uh, especially for all mining together close by the command ship, which is where I'm at right now. Uh, and we're pretty safe when we're when we, when we mining in that same relative area quickly respond to anyone that we need. So there we go, we've removed the items from uh, the rock muncher uh, that can get lost during repair. Those items being anything that is like a tripod uh, uh, or anything that's a floor uh, in the ore containers. Okay, so here we've got rock muncher one. It's been spawned and we're going to go ahead and repair it before we take it out. Uh, but before we uh, can repair it, it looks like we are going to need some bastium uh, we don't have any bastium right now currently in storage, so I'm going to have to go, go mine it probably take uh, number two out before I can go ahead and do that. Um, I do want to come back and repair it because it has been uh, quite a while since this has been repaired, so I'll show you how to do that shortly. Ships here. Let's go to Rock Venture 2. Rock Venture 2 will spawn that one. And there she is. I'm going to go to repair to fuel her up. And yeah, it looks like repair time is like 50 seconds. Price is 1800 credits, which is more than enough. Uh, and just going to take some ice, maybe even some glass. That's interesting. All right, so we're going to go ahead and hit repair on the most recent uh, blueprint. I don't want to do the original uh, because then it will really mess things up because <laughs> uh, it's, it's at that original blueprint's been out of date for a some time. Uh, so we're just going to do the most recent one, which is 18 days ago. If you build your own rock munchers, they're going to be already up to date with the latest uh, updates and fixes for the game. So you don't have to worry about that at all. But if you're looking at the corp ones, be sure if you're going to repair it, always use the uh, most recent date list listed and just hit repair. And it will start the repair. In this case, we'll just wait a minute. And through the magic of editing, we're almost done here with repair. Sure, repair is complete. So I should be able to spawn it back now. Alright, it will respawn by itself, never mind. And there you go, fully active, and it does not need any further repairs. So we're good. She's fully fueled, ready to go. Uh, if I go hop aboard. And as you can tell here, you've got a full stack of rods here that are uh, fully fueled, ready to go. 
Uh, your reserve tanks are full up and other propellant is all showing all full from over here as you can tell. Now I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the spawn area because as you can tell it will despawn here momentarily if I don't. So I'm going to go ahead and translate this downward using the downward arrow key on my keyboard just to clear the spawn area. Stay in the safe zone if I can. Alright, I'm going to hold down shift. Kind of push this thing forward a bit more. Just tap, tap shift, tap shift. Alright, stop tapping shift. Alright, so we're now out of the spawn area. And I can show you the rest of the ship here. Taking a look at the rock puncher. And you'll notice it has four lasers and two ore collectors. It also has a series of auto uh, avoidance uh, uh, beams to go ahead and keep uh, us from hitting space rocks. And she's got lots of good thrusters to go fairly, fairly, fairly fast. Uh, I'm not sure if she's max speed uh, when full, but she definitely is max speed when empty. And she can get to places very quickly. On board the rock launcher, you have these two ports here. Uh, they are for uh, emergency use. Uh, primarily, you've got a reserve tank here that you can then feed into uh, your main tank system and hit these buttons to go ahead and, and have fuel start passing uh, from your reserve uh, into uh, your main tanks if your tanks are run out. But we don't use these ports for doing any kind of uh, storage uh, ores because it's not connected to that system. Instead, you have these over here for that purpose. Just plug in, hit I, and you can get access to the ore container system. Over here, you've got all of the chips. Don't bother with these. More chips on this side. Don't bother with that. Down here, you should have an emergency uh, 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 crafting bench. This here is your speedometer. Back before there was actually a spotometer in the game, this is how it was done. And this just keeps up with that legacy system there. You've got both uh, rods uh, in fuel chambers and you've got spare rods on the perimeter of it. You can do two full changes if needed. And this thing has got quite the range on it. It'll, it'll go to the middle of most belts. Uh, but you'll probably need to get a refill on the way back. And that's what the uh, the bench is for to help craft craft those rods as you need. Fairly fairly uh, straightforward uh, design. We like it a lot. It's got a lot of good uh, armor, so you know hitting a void or two is going to totally wreck your day. But you do want to be careful still. But taking a look at the co cockpit, um, we really don't use this side here at all. So maybe uh, you know, for the chair or the canopy, or the canopy flips open if you want to. But I for just getting out of my back seat and hop out the top here. The chair likes to swivel around. Easy in and out. On the right side here you've got your operations panel. Uh, you've got your resource bridges here for flowing in and flowing out. Uh, this is for these bridges right here uh, to be able to flow resources in or out. If you need to do a refuel of your tanks externally, I believe to refuel the ship, uh, you would need to disconnect from here, plug into your, your main uh, uh, propellant uh, and tank system here, and you can, uh, even if your reserve is empty, um, you just need, need to reverse. This is to, to reverse the, the flow uh, of these ports. So currently it's flowing, uh, I believe this is flowing in. Uh, that's, no, sorry, this is flowing out, this is flowing in. You'll figure it out. I think that's how it works. If you ever need it, I believe that's how that works. I've only had to use it once. Um, but ever since they've included repair in the game for these uh, uh, ship terminals, uh, that repair function essentially fuels your ship so you don't have to do any of the manual labor that used to be involved with that, which is really, really nice. Going on, uh, we've got cabin lights. We've got a shutdown button, which shuts down uh, the uh, uh, the fuel chambers. 
always, always, always make sure um, that this button is turned off when you first get in the cockpit. That is the first thing you really want to check because you start flying out there and you're basically running on pure battery. This battery will drain fairly quickly. And all these panel buttons will completely wink out, turn off black, and you can't even tell what they are unless you go point at the buttons. And if you can't see what those buttons look like, you just hover over it, hit the E, and then hit the U key. And if you go to the data tab here, it'll tell you uh, what this button actually is named. And you want to make sure that the shutdown button uh, is uh, uh, at this point set to it looks like set to 100 here. But just flick the switch. Here, here it's off. And here it's on. Uh, oh, the shutdown button is technically shutting down the full ship. So we want to make sure that it is not shut down. We want to make sure that that shutdown button is off. The minimum gen here button is for uh, setting the minimum generator rate, which is right here. You can set it manually with the switch. 40 is the default, that works just fine. Uh, this is the current generator rate, which is zero. We're not really using any of the ship systems, so that's why we're just off your battery here. Uh, and there's nothing really being processed by the fuel, fuel chambers. We've got several different rods, and their rod status is here. And here, if you change out rods, you want to manually uh, set the number of rods here every time you swap out the rods. It's not automatic. This is not automatic uh, status at all on your spare rods over here. This is your propellant level. This is your timer. Your transponder. Make sure your transponder is always, 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 always turned off. Uh, we'll use that only for emergencies. To, to, you know, if you strand the ship or something like that. And even then, you want to be very careful using that. You are in a hot zone. This is your strength factor. It's at one point something. Anything above one point zero is a fully functional ship. At least, you know, it's not going to fall apart on you while you start flying. Um, over here, we've got your speedometer, which I like to turn on. That's that uh, downstairs thing down there. And this will show us how fast we're going in our speed. Looking at the front panel, uh, the very first thing you really kind of want to turn on is your uh, uh, is your range finder, which is right here. And so it says range here, and then there's also a guidance uh, guidance uh, button here, which puts those out, tells you how far away you are. So I think so. I can just you know use the the, a the AWSD key to kind of move my ship up and down, left and right. And these indicators will pop up, letting me know when something's in front of my ship. Very, very useful. When I'm flying, I like to use uh, the avoidance system here, which if I turn these on, I hit the avoidance button, it'll just turn them all on instantly. And now when I am uh, approaching something, the ship by itself will move out of the way until you clear the object. Which is really great for flying your asteroid belts, which I'm about to do here. Um, I have a void is turned on. So first things first, I want to go ahead and make sure shutdown is turned off. Avoidance is turned on when I'm flying out in space here. Um, do be careful though if you're close to the ship. Uh, if you're trying to fly into the hangar, it'll smack you to the other side of the hangar while it's trying to avoid being near the ship. Just something to be aware of. What else we got here? We have a navigation button, which is only good in the uh, uh, blue belt. I'm gonna smack into the wall here. It's fine. Uh, I'm gonna hit my back thrust here, back thrust key. You'll need to set your key lines on your own. You can do that using the the, the letter V on your keyboard. Uh, it'll pop this up here, and you can go and set your bindings that way for your ship. Hit the V key again, as in Victor, and will just disappear that menu. This aim button, I'm not quite sure what this is. I think this is for the auto navigation uh, as well. It goes with navigation here. So I ignore these buttons. I also ignore the autopilot button as well. We did all the piloting manually here, especially this far out. Uh, you've got a cruise button when you turn that on, if you just Toggle the throttle just to hit it on. It'll just actually just keep flying the ship and you don't even have to touch anything. Um, just I turn down my thrust using my, uh, my control key there and it will 
stop that board motion altogether. But I'm currently in a, in a cruise mode. Um, when I get to an asteroid, I will be approaching it and mining it. The sloth button over here. The sloth button is not how fast you're going, but how fast, or rather how slow you're turning. Um, so if I take the sloth off, you'll notice if I turn right, I turn very quickly. But if I turn on sloth, the sensitivity is at 6, I think, right here. I can toggle, change that value here, the switch. Um, I'm now able to get more fine tuned control of my turning ability up, down, left, and right. It's the whole turning ability of the ship, which is great. I really love that. Uh, turtle is for um, just how, you know, that's your actual speed of, of, of motion. Um, if I go full thrust here with that turtle on, I'm going max speed. I'm just going to just climb up here, maybe 147, which is max speed. Yeah. So this is the max speed when it's completely, uh, completely empty. I do want to turn turtle back on, though, because I am going to be go flying into these roids. And I want to make sure that my avoidance system is turned on. Don't let this fool you. Just because this is on doesn't mean your avoidance is turned on. You need to make sure that this avoidance button is actually on so it will dodge asteroids for you as you fly. When you're flying through an asteroid field, you want to make sure you're flying at under uh, 80 um, on the speedometer here. Um, you can set your turtle rate or your speed, uh, the percentage here of your throttle. It's 20%. I can increase that if I wanted to to 21, and I would go even faster, which I'm going to go here. It's going to hit maybe about 60, maybe I want to guess. So here I am just flying out looking for a bastion roid. And let's see what we can find. Looks like here's a here's a, a first candidate over here. What we got. I know you're getting close when the light panel starts flashing. But with avoidance turned on, you're just going to wind up uh, avoiding it entirely. It's going to move the ship, slow it down, and move it up or in the opposite direction of where the asteroid is, and you'll safely fly right past it. And that's only good at these slower speeds of under 80, I think, for the rock launcher. But I'm already here. Let this fly under me, turn off my throttle. I'm going to turn off my avoidance entirely so I'm not dodging roids. There's another friendly cap ship. I believe that's the star geezer that we've got up here. And here, now they've got avoidance turned on, at least I know when I'm centered on the roid, which is really nice. There we go. I've got these flashing. I'm just going to hit the approach button. And this will fly you towards the uh, the target that you're pointed at and slow down your craft automatically. You don't even have to touch it. It's all just kind of set and forget. Though the more skilled pilots don't even bother with approach, we just manually get closer because it's just faster for us to do so. But when you're starting out, just go ahead and use the approach button. And hopefully it doesn't disappear on you and freak out. I want to see what kind of uh, material this is. I get the material scanner button right here. And it should display right here on the screen here what uh, what it is soon. I know that's been a little bit... There it goes. Yep. So it has, it's sutrite. It's 70 stacks. That's quite a number of sutrite. So if we want to start mining this up, we've already approached it. The, 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 ship is automatically stopped within range of its mining lasers. All I have to do now is just hit the mining button. I got the collect collectors turned on automatically. They're already turned on here. I don't have to do anything about that. And I'm just going to hit the mining button. And when I hit the mining button, it'll get me even closer. It's, auto, it's just flying by itself right now. And I'll get even closer to the, set, the center of the target here that I've uh, lined up at here. And it will just start binding as soon as it gets within range. And here it goes. Now do your thing, Rock Puncher. It will get fairly close too. You'll on a large C10 like this, uh, you'll actually see 
yeah, pretty much half the roid disappear out of your console. That's that's perfectly normal. So there it goes. It just goes by itself. Now I can just, I can just stand here and not move, and it will the lasers just will shoot through the rock by itself. I can set the uh, scoop beam pattern here uh, to the height of the lasers as far as how high they go up or down. You have the sweeping depth, which uh, is pretty easy to lift and go, is what I've got it set to here. Some good, uh, robust options. That's why we love this line. But I also like to manually kind of sweep it side to side, up and down, just to shoot through the rest of the asteroid. Get as much as it as we can. Now, this is Sutrite. Uh, out here, it's not very worth much. This is really cheap ore here. So I'm not going to mine the whole thing. To stop mining, I just hit the uh, this red button right here. I believe this is not waiting enough. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. That stops the mining lasers. It's still collecting. Collector's still on. I'm going to reverse my thrust. I always want to back out the way that I came. Looks like my battery got chewed up there. If you keep mining a C10 like this, you do want to hit that minimum generator button. And that way it will start forcing that, that generator rate to go all the way up to, to max. Looks like it's already at 100 so far. And I want to back up here. See, I accidentally hit the I accidentally hit the roid there. I should have just backed away. <laughs> but she's a tough ship. And that's just fine with me. We're good. Nothing's broke yet. Keyword yet. So that is how you approach to mine. I'm going to go ahead and now fly back using avoidance back to, uh, in this case, is our Pathfinder command ship. I have found our ship and we're right here. And as I approach, I want to take off uh, the avoidance feature. Now I can see what uh, ores I have aboard. Uh, let me turn off avoidance first. Avoidance is turned off. Uh, the port is right here at the bottom left, or on the bottom right. And I'm plugged into my container stack. And I can see here all the ores that I have mined up. All the suits right. If I don't want to have any of this ice coming back with me, I can right click, click on delete all items, and hit confirm. There's also a quick and easy way to um, to see how many items are actually there. So how much suit right did I take in? I took it 74 suit right. I'm just going to go ahead and confirm on the deletion of the ice here, and just only bring back suit right to the Pathfinder command ship. And I've turned off avoidance. So I should be able to enter the main hangar pretty easily here. Now this ship will look vastly different by the time you get to play with it. Because you'll constantly moving it. And yeah, just smack into it. A good old thing. Back in terrible landing. Alright. Uh, and I do want to go and transfer my ore. Prefer to transfer it outside of the the, uh, the ship storage area because sometimes transferring work can take quite a while. You only have like 100, sec 100 seconds to get stuff transferred. I'm going to transfer it all to the space storage. It should be fairly quick for this small amount. I'm going to turn off the navigation markers and I'm going to shut down uh, the minimum gen. Don't need to hit the shutdown key at all. Take off cruise. Keep turtle on. Keep sloth on. And I hit the chair. That's how you're done using a rock puncher. Unless you want to go repair it for the next guy. Up next, I'll show you how to do 
how to change out fuel rods, and how to do a field repair. Let's go do that now. We're going to do a field repair. Field repair time. Let's take out again the Rock Puncher 2. Spawn it. We're going to do repair on it. Always do repair. Fill it up. She's getting refilled. 22 seconds. Dark Ventures are very, very good ships to be able to fly uh, solo or with groups. You can mine quite a bit uh, within the space of an hour. Uh, I believe there are 250 crates aboard, if not more. A very good all rounder mining ship. So here we are aboard the rock puncher. Hop in the seat. Down we go. Make sure I got everything, got my loadout. Make sure the rods are good. Visually check talent level. Here looks good. We're going to go ahead and turn on avoidance now that we're on space. Turn on cruise. Now let's just go somewhere. So, say you're out on about flying and, well, you smack and you hit a roid. Or the game bugs out on you and you smack and you hit a roid. And your ship has fallen apart. It's broken. What can you do? Well, I'm not going to actually hit a roid with this exercise, but I'm going to show you what you can do to repair yourself. So first things first, you want to do all stop as much as possible, uh, maybe even hit shut down. At this point, it's going to conserve your energy. Uh, turn off every, anything that's flashing, uh, the voids, the crews, even turn off the, uh, the collectors. Um, your sloth can stay on, your turtle can stay on. But for now, everything's been turned off. Even the speedometer is turned off. So I'm going to go hop out, of, hop out of the chair so that you can turn around. And hop out of the ship to see if anything is wrong with it. Now, I'm going to actually perk the ship by taking up a metal plate, let's say, right here. Okay. And maybe something, maybe it's just a little loose or something. I don't know. Maybe it got banged up. I'll even take this plate off here too. Let's... Oh, that look good. Say that's flooding in space. Say maybe even maybe even this part here got thrown out in space as well. Parts are just there floating in space. When you smack a roid or something like that, not that you really truly 100% be damaged, but you know there's always a possibility. I'm going to go ahead and also grab this piece here. You hear that snap, right? That means I actually literally broke a, uh, uh, a pipe there. So you're going to have like pieces like this is floating in space. You're like, oh great, how do I get this fixed? I mean, well, you could grab the tow ship from the Pathfinder, come tow the ship back and do a repair, or you can do what is loving you know, as, a, as a field repair. To do field repair, you're going to want to first of all uh, clean up uh, any pipes, anything that's on the, the material in front of you. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to go ahead and use my tool to kind of clean this up. There you go. That's cleaned up. Nothing on those. No bolts hanging out or anything like that. So those are cleaned up parts. Um, let's go ahead and also kind of clean that stuff a bit to. So you're, you're prepping your prepping repair area as best as you can. And the neat thing is you can actually do a field repair using the snap tool. So just hit the U key while looking at the ship. Go to the blueprint tab. And if something's broken, you can click on this middle button here. It'll give you a kind of a visual as to what is possibly either red, 
uh, or in this case, it's, it's kind of a missing. It's it's not green. So anything that's not green is, is obviously not connected to the ship. So we need to definitely get that fixed. So I'm going to go ahead and grab anything that's loose. And this here is a missing piece right there. So if I redo my my uh, U tool again, it should now show two missing pieces there in blue, plus the the, the big cap piece here and the um, uh, and, and the nap beam there. To fix that, all I need to do is make sure I got all the pieces either crafted or repaired uh, or cleaned up, just floating in space near the craft. And all I have to do is now click on this. Uh, attach button. I click this, pieces will start automatically floating, floating back into place, bolting automatically, so I don't have to. Now I can click this, get an idea as to what is now not connected to the ship. Looks like these are now connected to the ship. But I still have um, items here that are out of place. Um, I have mainly cables and pipes that are out of place. Um, what I like to do is take my uh, durability uh, view off, hit the U key, and just stand here above my ship and grab my tool. In this case, it's going to be the cable tool. This one here. Now, when I look at my ship, I can see through the HUD that there is a red disconnected cable here. Now you're like, well, how are you going to be able to get into it? I mean, it's deeply buried in there. Well, that is pretty easy. All I need to do is, uh, I believe, just look up into space and just press and hold down the uh, the tool button and paint over the missing spot. But you can tell it's not doing any of that right now because I don't have the blueprint loaded. So I need to look at the ship first with the blueprint. Wait for it to load. Now I can go in and see that red dot. Look into an empty area of space away from the ship. Press and hold down my gun. And now I can just go on in and just see how it's following that red dot all the way, it's now fully connected. Whatever it was that was missing is now connected on the cable side. Next I'm going to do my pipe. Same thing. I got the I got the U key, I got the blueprint loaded, I look up into space, there's my missing pipes, press and hold down in space and while holding down the, that key, the, the mouse button, I then just go in and just paint over those pipes and those pipes are connected and all those pipes and cables are now completely repaired uh, these over here I believe these are related to something else let's see if I can hunt for that let's take this off and see if this I like to go after I hit a roid I like to go through my entire ship just see if there's any cables in this case, those are cables, right? I believe those are cables. Yeah, there's, it says there's five cables that are missing compared to the blueprint. And I think I know which one it is. I think those are the cables that are probably they were up here. Yeah, I think they were up here for the broken door, which I never got a chance to repair myself. But uh, I do know that this is working now because then if I go ahead and turn on my navigation module, this beam will start working. So we're just going to assume that this is this part that I broke is actually fully repaired. And get back to my ship. Hop in the seat. Put my chair in. Turn on uh, navigation lights. Go outside and I can see if it's repaired. And there it is. It is fully repaired. And that is how you do a field repair. Finally, uh, if you don't know how to change out uh, fuel rods, uh, to do so you just uh, uh, point your your cursor at any of the rods here, hit the, uh, your grab key, whichever one you bind it to, hold it, drop it in space, grab a spare one from, from the top or sides, and just bring it in, 
and hit your your release key, which is for me that was the letter E is what I got bound to. Be sure to replace your rods until you hear that clicking sound, that's how you know that they're in there. And that's all there is to maintaining this out in the field. I'm now going to go ahead and get this back at the base. And we'll call it a day. But now you know how to spawn, repair, refuel, and to use the ITC Rock Launcher. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in Corp Chat or in Corp Help. We'll be glad to help you out. Thanks for watching.